how would you make a bike frame building fixture like this one even better? I want to share some of the things that I've done in the last three years that I've been making this to improve it. I've improved the, uh, the functionality, the precision, the appearance, the durability. I've made it a better product, and I want to show some of the specific things that have achieved that. We've been making and selling and shipping this fixture for three years now, and we just shipped our 100th unit, which is so cool. Really proud of that figure and glad to be able to support all the frame builders all over the world. But in that time, there's just tons of little iterative changes that we've made to make the product better and stronger. And so let's fire some off. Uh, this last year has been a big year of, of development and refinement. So the first one that I wanna talk about is the big winger at the bottom bracket cluster. At the bottom bracket, if, if you want to clamp and then release the bottom bracket shell, we now have what I call the big winger. This is a machined aluminum wing nut, uh, and then we bottom out an M8 stud into it so that you don't need an Allen wrench or anything to uh, tighten and release the bottom bracket shell from the fixture. These are available in our web store to buy separately, but they also come standard now. And there's two lengths. And so the one that ships standard is the long one. It's 130 millimeters so that you can do anything, including fat bikes. And we sell a shorter one too that just saves you some turns because most people are building with narrower bottom bracket shells. And so those are available in our web store. The long one comes standard. I think it really rounds out the look of the fixture, makes it nice and makes it a lot easier to use without running after wrenches. In several places on the fixture now, we have CNC machined millimeter scales. These achieve several goals. I think, first of all, they look really nice. They're like a piece of trim on the fixture, and I think they look excellent. The next thing that they achieve for us is that they're actually a higher precision. We used to use an adhesive backed millimeter scale from Oregon Rule, and they're really quite good, uh, but if you're not careful when you apply them, they can stretch over their length. Whereas these are actually machined aluminum and they're made with the precision of a nearly brand new CNC machine. Uh, these are very precision over their length and uh, much more than like a, a plastic adhesive backed scale could be, or even a lot of rulers are probably not made uh, on a machine that has as much precision capability as the CNC mill that we use for everything. So these really have a lot of precision. Another benefit of these is that they're really easy to field install. There's just three screws and T-nuts for something like this, and uh, you can loosen it and you can slide it. And then we have a whole calibration procedure where you use a machined block on the, on the end uh, where it abuts the seat tube, and that's all documented, and uh, it makes field installing these with confidence in the right position, really easy. And if you do get it wrong, you can just loosen the screws and slide it a bit to fix it, which is not something you can do when you have a adhesive backed sticker. You know, once you stick it wrong, it's kind of stuck. So this here is actually a frame fixture ready to get shipped out to a customer. We just gotta slap the FedEx label on it and get it out the door. And the reason that I share this as a big improvement is that uh, this is a much smaller box than we used to use. And that's because we assemble all of the parts that we make into uh, the assembly the customer gets has T-slot extrusion from Mysumi. And we used to buy everything, fully assemble it, disassemble it, put it into a box that was huge, and then ship that. Well, as it turns out, about a third of our customers are outside of the United States. This one's going to France. And so uh, the shipping cost is very high when you have to ship something that's over 50 pounds, uh, especially as it gets big and it's oversized. And so I wanted a solution that provided a better value to the customers, and this really does that well. This is a double wall cardboard box. It's 18 by 24 by six inches. This thing is really solid and uh, all the parts inside are really well supported and isolated from each other. We make use of this skin packaging machine, which is so cool. I got this at Industrial Surplus, and uh, it, it, it actually isolates the parts from each other really, really well. Even if you pack the box a little bit differently per the customer's needs, you can still isolate all the parts really well without like filling this volume with foam or something. And uh, it's a really secure way to send it. Now the customer can buy the extrusions directly from Mysumi, which is a global company. So uh, you know anyone anywhere in the world should be able to order that from them. And the cumulative, like the total amount of shipping that our customers pay is drastically lowered. It's also uh, a lot lower risk that things get damaged in shipping. It makes our lives a lot easier and it lowers the amount of money that we have to spend to then pass something on to our customers. So you know we don't need to like mark up the cost of the extrusions 
extrusion. Customer can buy that directly. And then we've put a lot of time into, for instance, those millimeter scales, but other tricks and assembly guides and documentation to make it as easy as possible for you, the customer, to assemble the whole thing with confidence and ease when it all shows up to your door. So the frame fixture itself holds the dummy axle, the bottom bracket, the top of the seat tube, and both ends of the head tube. But obviously, you might need some additional support, the seat stays, uh, the tips of the chain stays and the seat stays, the chain stays uh, at the bottom bracket end, and uh, these other main tube supports. And so basically, uh, we've had rear end supports for a long time, but recently I redesigned all of these parts to make them function better. And then I've also fully developed, it, for the first time, main tube holders. So if this is your diamond frame, you know, this would be a top tube support, a down tube support. This is your upper seat stays support with what I like to call the sandwich plate that sandwiches the seat stays in there. It can kind of help if you have a seat stay bend. You can uh, get those tubes in phase with the flat of this plane. Um, and then the rear end here. And so uh, on the front end, we have these V-rollers that support the tube. They're really super easy to adjust uh, in terms of their, their position along the slot. Also, there's this flexure style clamp and when you release this and you swing it, it swings nice and smooth, but when you tighten it, it locks up really, really nice and it doesn't jiggle or, they're, they're, you know, the, the style of flexure clamp is really effective, essentially. We also have a retaining clip and we have a wave, wa or a wave spring. And so while you're adjusting it, it feels really nice and smooth and that locks up really rigid. And similar to our fork fixture and stay slayer, we implemented the 20 degree T-stud technology. So when you make an adjustment here and you tighten it, this whole piece can't just pivot around a point so easily. It's kind of locked in on an angle. It's almost like a set of V-blocks, and uh, this works really well. So the whole thing is just really, really stable in space, and then yet also really easy to adjust. It's really easy to calibrate these uh, for center line in the field, and then when you set it up against the tube, you can just stretch an elastic hair tie over your tube. They work really nicely, and we have a similar version of this that goes on the seat tube extrusion that can hold the, you know, your seat tube or your top tube toward the seat tube. On the rear end here, I've updated the upper seat stay holding plate. So now this one is wider than it used to be. It adjusts much more smoothly. It locks up more rigidly. And in addition to all of that, it's actually adjustable for center line in a way that it didn't used to be. And we made it so that these faces actually can be used for calibration. So on a fixture like this one, which is drive side out, this face here, you would slide the whole thing down and it would reference against the bottom bracket post so that you could get this calibrated for center line. And now you know that this V-notch is meaningfully on center in a way that, you know, it's, 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 it can be calibrated to a higher degree of accuracy than uh, the, the older fixtures, uh, the older design for this wasn't uh, quite as precision. Um, in the rear end here, this is the stay tip holders for the seat stays and chain stays. And we've improved this a lot. So on the old ones, if you were to push side to side, it would wiggle the base piece slightly. That bothered me. And these arms, if you swung them around, it would adjust the preload on this knob and it would work it loose or it would work it tight. But now we've added an anti-rotation washer. And so when I tighten this, uh, it's, it's independently adjusted from the swing of the arms, which is just way nicer uh, from a user standpoint. I really prefer this. And the big improvement that we've employed down here is that we've, we've gone to fully machining these screws. They used to be off the, bolt, off the shelf shoulder bolts and now they're machined on the lathe and they just look nice and they feel awesome and they, they have a knurl at the top. And then we've included this same, uh, the same arm here with the flexure clamp. So when you tighten it, it just locks up really nicely. The old one didn't lock up as nicely. And so just always trying to make every little detail work a little bit nicer. So this holds the, the dropouts of your frame. It's a dummy axle. And we set it into position on the dummy axle holder. And I've always appreciated how nicely this sets up and locks up. But 
th this action, where it slides up and down, could have been improved. Uh, it was never terrible, but what we did is we, we changed it so that now this clamps with a 20 degree angle to this plane. And what that does is as you tighten it up, it draws into this, this sort of corner here, and it's almost like a, holding something with a set of V-blocks. So now, when this is tight, you can't pivot this whole thing about this point in space. And on the old vis revision, uh, it was possible for it to shift just slightly uh, if you didn't have this clamp super tight. But now, it really locks up nicely. It adjusts nicely. We also made a change here. Uh, the mount for these is integral, so it can't wiggle back and forth. And we have these anti-rotation washers, which uh, you know, the only way to mount those was to change the design. And so I did a couple of design changes at once, and I just, I'm happy with how this came, came out. I think it's a better design. So here's the last one I'll share. I think this one is kind of symbolic of the ethos of everything. But basically, this is a, like an end cap for the, the extrusion that we build the fixture on. And this is like the fourth iteration of these end caps. And I found this one, this would have been from the first batch that we ever did. So this is Rev 1 and Rev 4. And there's a bunch of changes we've made over the years. But basically, when we buy this extrusion, it comes from Mysumi. It's a really good product, but because it's a, a variable length and it's not CNC machined, it's extruded, uh, you can order it with the ends tapped. And so they'll actually tap the holes in the end of it with an M8 tap. It shows up ready to go. It's awesome. But because that's not done on a super precision like CNC machine, the positional accuracy of these holes is not, um, it's not as accurate as it could be, right? And so uh, that's fine if we design around that. So the earlier ones, I, I would use a countersunk cap screw through these holes. And when you would tighten it up, this would sit positionally where it would sit. When I move to a button head cap screw, it allows you to actually shift it around in space and tighten it up where you want it so that it actually feels centered on the end. Just a little touch that I added about a year and a half ago. I really think it made an improvement to the fit and the finish of the whole fixture. Uh, prior to that change, obviously there's more visibly apparent changes that I made over the years. I went from a heavy chamfer to a corner round, like a little uh, corner rounding tool or a fillet. And I just think that's a nicer feel and a nicer look. It makes a nicer product. Also, I obviously changed the color. This is our signature green color that we do on everything. They used to be just black anodized. This was fine. This is better. Additionally, this uh, data plate that we've always done, you know, this is a cool feature of our fixture. It's got a QR code that links to the resources page where you can uh, answer a lot of questions about the fixture that you might have. It says who it's built for, and so we laser etch these per the customer. You, we, we can put in your, your brand's graphics or your name. There's a build date, there's a serial number, and so that's all cool, but this used to live on the seat tube plate and it was kind of visually busy, and this is just a better spot for it. So I moved it to the end. I even forgot there's another improvement that we made on this, which is that there's actually two holes through the middle of the plate so that if you ever wanted to replace this plate, you could actually get it back off again. We stick this on with 3M VHB tape. It sticks very good. It's nearly impossible to remove one of these without damaging the surrounding green plate, but now there's actually holes in behind the data plate, and you could push it out with pins, and so that was another revision I even forgot about until right now. But we're just always trying to sneak little revisions. Every time we, you know, we do kind of small batch machining, and every time something comes around again, I'll think about all the things that have been bugging me or the feedback I get from customers, and I'll see if I can make a revision to include some of those details into the product. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, come back around and watch some more videos. Always trying to show off what's new on the product and what's going on in the shop. Thanks for watching.